And as you can see by this chart, the number of new cases has skyrocketed, more than doubling in recent weeks. One person has been predicting this kind of turn in the pandemic since he first appeared to meet the press back on April 26. Dr. Michael Osterholm said then we were in the foothills of this crisis and had mountains yet to climb. And if you could see that daily case count since the start of the pandemic, it looks like an ever growing mountain. Dr. Osterholm is, of course, an infectious disease expert at the University of Minnesota. And he's now a member of President-elect Biden's COVID advisory board. Dr. Osterholm, welcome back to Meet the Press. I thought it was important to get your perspective you. first before I got to President-elect Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain. So let me just simply ask you this. We're seeing the exponential rise that you um, sadly predicted would happen in COVID cases, you and many others, this uh, fall and winter. Here we are. Um, are we going to plateau anytime soon? Or is this, uh, uh, is this trajectory just going to keep going up and up? Well, thank you again. And let me just say at the outset that our future is in our hands. And right now, for at least the next three weeks, because cases are already in the, we would say, in the pipeline, meaning they're already infected, these numbers are going to go way up. Our job is to imagine what the world could be like if we do make the changes we need to make. Uh, we're going to be heading to a vaccine in the next few months uh, where we could start to imagine having summer baseball back, uh, barbecues, etc. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, we are in a very dangerous period, the most dangerous. And if we don't basically take important steps like stop swapping air with our, our neighbors, our friends, our colleagues, we're going to see these numbers grow substantially. So what should happen right now? I mean, I've talked to plenty of mayors this week and governors this week, um, and they all feel like that you can tell they all want to do more and they're hesitant because of the fatigue, because of the economic impact, because of the lack of leadership from the federal government, perhaps the lack of money from the federal government. This is the situation we are in, not the utopia that we'd all like to have in governments working together. What do we do right now? What does a local mayor do without the help of the federal government? Well, it's critical that we do get the help of the federal government, and I, I can't make that any more uh, straightforward than that. Uh, if we're going to control this virus out in our communities right now, uh, we're going to have to support those who are going to be suffering economically. You know, you, you have a choice. Do you want to have schools open or do you want to keep bars and restaurants open? Well, if you shut down bars and restaurants, they're hanging on by a thread that single mother waitress that basically doesn't have any other income. We have got to support them in helping to do the right thing. They want to. I don't know anybody that doesn't want to. If we're going to uh, help our health care system right now, try to respond to this crisis, and, and, and we know that they are at a tipping point, we've got to have help right now. And so I, I just urge that the last thing we do is support our governors. They are the front lines right now. There is no national leadership on this issue. They're trying. I don't care if they're Democrat or Republican, they're right. trying. And we've got to support them in these issues. Look, uh, now that you are a member of, of President-elect Biden's uh, COVID uh, task, uh, advisory board, um, any comments you m make are suddenly going to um, get put through a different prism. So I want to give you a chance to clarify what you meant by the four to six week lockdown, because you said even back in all here uh, in and have some sheltering in place if we have any chance at bending this curve? Well, first of all, we've got to reframe this issue. We have got to understand again that what we're trying to do is get to this summer when we have vaccines that can fundamentally change how safe it is to be in everyday life. And what we need to do right now is focus on what's going to make that difference. And as I just said, it's very important that, first of all, we don't swap air with people. That's how this is being transmitted. And, and we have got to do whatever it takes to support that. Uh, you see the governors struggling right now. They want help. I've actually talked to five governors in the last two days. Mm -hmm. All of them said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all at least be on the same page? But right now, you've got, my state's surrounded by four other states, and they all have different recommendations. That by itself is what we're talking about, standardizing how we're all going to approach this. This virus doesn't care what party you are, doesn't care where right. you live. We have to understand that that's what we have to work on right now. Dr. Ostom, it certainly looks like we're, the case count's only going to go up. The hospitalizations are only going to go up and the death count is only going to go up between now and the beginning of the of of, of passing out this vaccine. Um, how close to the breaking point is our hospital system? And, and at, at what point is that going to be the, the, the point where the hospital system is going to force us to shut down? We all will have no choice. 
Well, I think you've said it very well. You know, my worst fear is what we saw happen in, in other countries where people were dying on the streets. People literally were dying in the waiting room of emergency rooms after spending 10 hours just waiting to be seen. That's going to start happening. The media will start reporting it, and we will see the breadth and the depth of this tragedy. That, I hope, will not be the way that we finally decide to reduce our risk, this idea of swapping air. We've got to stop doing that. And so I, I, I think it is the health care system's breaking, literally breaking, that will unfortunately bring us to a sense of reality of what we must do in the short term. And how close are we to that point? Well, you know, the case numbers, as you've seen, how quickly they've uh, been rising, I think that's going to continue. And there are many healthcare systems that a few more weeks of this level of activity, and that will happen. That will happen. Dr. Michael Osterholm of the University of Minnesota, we have you on here to give us the straight talk, and you always do. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective Thank with you. us and your expertise. So Hello from Washington. I'm Chuck Todd, and thanks for checking out the Meet the Press channel on YouTube. Click on the button down here to subscribe and click over here to watch the latest interviews, highlights, and other digital exclusives.